fine. Once upon a time. Happily ever after. Emotion. Consistency.
Do you say? There's a roar. But he's cuckled at his death. The eyes are shut. I ought to be killed. They pray. Well, I'm going to be tired. He's dead. He is 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 dead. At his heels, a stone. No. Oh, no! Pray you warn him for me. For Hecuba. Who is Hecuba to him? Why did you have the other queen? He didn't believe in the theater. If you can't have the other he would drown this day. Will God deliver you? He's the elder of the baker's daughter. He's not believing. We know. We know not what we may be. I tell you, and the many I think that you're capable of eyes and ears. Yet I, Raylan, have no words. But when they ask you what it means, say you did. Or I was St. Valentine's Day, and all I want is that time to be with you. I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be your Valentine. Don't yell at me, Rose. God is here for the child. Chamber door. But out of me, that I'm not out of the kitchen. Never to party anymore. I'm going to Witness? <laughs> None. Did you tie him up? Beat him? <laughs> Lock him in a fireplace? <laughs> Six months for me. And that animal goes free. And what am I supposed to do if, if I survive being do we go home and lock myself up? Chainlock. Old lock. Dead lock. Start from sleep. 4 a.m. See something dark at the foot of my bed. He's not there! This Do I hear him in every crack? 
the doorbell rings. I don't want to flinch every time a man comes near me. <laughs> I won't carry pepper spray. <laughs> I just want to live my life. <laughs> He's never leaving this house. Why is Coco bad and stuff? Nay, pray. You want He is dead and gone, Lady! He is dead and gone! not come to my bed.
say that you kiss the ground that I walk on. I ought to be killed. I'm so tired, Kostya. If only I could rest. Rest. I am a seagull. No, that's not right. I am an actress. It doesn't matter. But he's here too? It doesn't matter. He didn't believe in the theater. He laughed at my dreams. And little by little, I stopped believing in myself. I lost heart. Constant fear for the child. I became trivial and commonplace. I acted without thinking or feeling. I didn't know what to do with my hands. I couldn't move properly or control my voice. You don't know what it's like to know that you are acting badly. Eagle you shot, you left it at my feet and said, I have a subject for a short story. A girl like yourself lives on the shores of a lake. She loves the lake like a seagull. But one day, by chance, a man comes along and because he has nothing better to do, destroys her. When you see him, don't tell him anything. I love him, yes, more than anything. By chance, a subject for a short story. How sweet it used to be, Kostya. Remember? How bright and warm. How joyous and pure our lives were. And our feelings for each other are like fine, delicate flowers. Do you remember? crazy about the warehouse? You think I'm in love with continental shoemakers? You think I want to spend 55 years down there in that Celotex interior with fluorescent tubes? Look, I'd rather somebody pick up a crowbar and batter out my brains than go back mornings. I go every time you come in here yelling that rise and shine, rise and shine. I say to myself how lucky dead people are. But I get up and I go. For $65 a month, I give up all that I ever dreamed of doing and being. Ever. And you say, self? Self's all I ever thought of? If self is what I thought of, mother, where would I be? I'd be where father is. Gone. As far as the system of transportation reaches. Don't grab at me, mother. I'm going to the movies. No. Wait. I'm going to opium dens. Yes. Opium dens. Dens of vice and criminal hangouts, mother. I've joined the Hogan gang. I'm a hired assassin. I carry a tummy gun in a violin case. I wrote a string of cat houses throughout the valley. They call me Killer. Killer Wingfield. 
I lead a double life. By day, a simple, honest warehouse worker. But by night, I'm the, I'm the dynamic czar of the underworld, mother. I go to gambling casinos, spin away fortunes on the roulette table. I wear a patch over one eye and a false mustache. Sometimes I put on green whiskers. On those occasions, people call me El Dorado or El Diablo. They call me all sorts of names. Oh, I can tell you things that would make you sleepless. My enemies, they plan to dynamite this place. They're gonna blow us all sky high some night. <laughs> and I'm gonna be so glad, so very happy. And so will you. You'll go up, up on a blue broomstick, stick, over Blue Mountain with 17 gentlemen callers. You ugly, babbling old witch! Monstrous, this play here, in fiction, in a dream of passion, could force his soul to his own conceit, that from her working, all his vis visage waned, tears in his eyes, distraction in his aspect, a broken voice, all for nothing. For Hecuba. What's Hecuba to him, or he to Hecuba, that he should weep for her? What would he do, had he the motive and the cue for passion that I have? He would drown the stage with tears, and cleave the general ear with horrid speech. Make mad the guilty, and appall the free. Confound the ignorant, and amaze indeed the very faculties of eyes and ears. Yet I, a dull, muddy metal, a school peak, like John of Dreams. I'm pregnant for my cause and can say nothing. No, not for a king, upon whose property and most dear life a damned defeat was made. Am I a coward? Who calls me villain? Breaks my paint across, plucks off my beard and blows it in my face, tweaks me by the nose. Gives me the lie of the throat as deep as to the lungs. Who does me this? Huh? Swoons, I should take it, for it cannot be. 
and I itch in liver, not gold to make oppression bitter. Or ere this, I should have fattened all the region's kites with this slave's awful. Bloody, body villain, remorseless, treacherous, legend, kindless villain. Oh, vengeance! I could not scream tonight. We will wait for the doctor, preparing for the truth. But there is no truth. Then I do not know what there is. I tell you, there is nothing at all. I wish I could see my poor daughter. But you know quite well it is impossible. She must not be waked unnecessarily. We will see her tomorrow. There is no sound in her room. I should be uneasy if I heard any sound. It is a very long time since I saw my daughter. I took her hand yesterday, but I could not see her. I do not know what has become of her. I do not know how she is. <laughs> no one tells me what ought to be told to me. And every day it's terrifying when one's dreamed to have upon it. But why are you not speaking? What should we say since you will not believe us? <laughs> you are afraid. Of betraying yourself. Come now, be rational. You have been hiding something from me for a long time. Something has happened in this house, and I am beginning to understand that. I dare not say which I know which is, but I shall know the truth. I shall wait for you to tell me the truth. But I have known it for a long time, in spite of you. And now, I feel that you were all paler than Jeanette. 
Grandfather, Grandfather, what is the matter, Grandfather? It is not you that I'm speaking of, girls. No, it's not you. I know you would tell me the truth if they were not found. Besides, I feel they are deceiving you as well. You will see, children. You will see. Do I not hear you all sobbing? Is my wife really so ill? It is no good trying to deceive me any longer. It is too late now. I know the truth is better than you. But we are not blind. We are not. Would you like to go into your daughter's room? This misunderstanding must be put an end to. Would you? No. No, no. Not now. Not yet. You see, you are not reasonable. One never knows how much a man has to ex express in his life. Who made that noise? It is just the light flickering, Grandfather. It seems very unsteady to me. Very. I think it is going out. There's no more oil. And it's gone right out. We cannot stay in the dark like this. Why not? I am quite accustomed to it. There's, there's a light in my wife's room. We shall take it from her presently. Where the doctor has been. Well, there's enough light in here. There's a light from outside. Is there light outside? Lighter than here. For my part, I would have soon talk in the dark. So would I. It seems to me that the clock makes a great deal of fun. Talk. <coughs> <coughs> Why are you silent? What do you want us to say? Is it really very peculiar tonight? Is it very dark in this room? There's not much light. We do not feel well. Ursula, open the window. Yes, child. Open the window a little. I begin to feel the want of air myself. Shh. Is the window open? Yes, dear father. It is wide open. One would have thought it was close. There was not a sound outside. No, Grandfather. Not a sound. The silence is extraordinary. Once we hear an angel tread, that's why I do not like the country. But we should hear the noise. Ursula, what o'clock is it? It is almost midnight, Grandfather. Where could we go?
Let's just go see him.